Okay. So today we're going to be using triple integrals to find the volume of this object, which looks strangely enough like an ice cream cone. Uh, there are two equations involved here that give you this graph. This is one of them. And this is the other. As I'm writing this second one out, I see on the left-hand side, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals something. Uh, it looks like the equation of a sphere, with the problem being is that a z shows up on the right-hand side. So if you had experience with equations of spheres, spheres before in a 3D world, generally they look like this, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals the radius squared. So this would have a center of 0, 0, 0, and a radius equal to r. Unfortunately here, this z shows up and causes some confusion. So we've got to remember some old mathematical tricks from our past. And uh, this thing looks like a sphere. If it can be the sphere, then we would know that this object on the top that I'm tracing over in green is actually a sphere. And then this other object, this one up here, must be this cone-shaped base giving us the ice cream cone. So let, let's go back to this equation. I'm going to do some algebra here that would be from your past. x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus z. I'll leave a little space and I'm going to say equals zero. So that's still the same equation that we had up here. And now I'm going to do a trick called completing the square. So <clears throat> I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the coefficient on z here. And so you can notice in front of that z, there's like a little one there. So it looks pretty sloppy, so I'll redraw it. But basically what you can do here, this is minus 1 times z. I'm going to take half of 1, which is a half, and then square it and put plus 1 fourth here. And I better be careful because if I add 1 fourth to the left, I've got to add it to the right. And then sure enough, this gets pretty neat now. You get x squared plus y squared plus, and the whole point of this was that this actually factors now to z minus one-half squared, and it equals one-fourth. And now this thing is looking more like a sphere. The center is zero, zero, and one-half, and the radius Keep in mind, over here on the right-hand side, this is always equal to the radius squared, so the radius is just one-half. So that's kind of neat. And then we go back up and then think about this equation for a moment. Um, that's the equation of this cone on the bottom. And so this thing must bump into this green hemisphere on the top. Um, in the plane, I'll attempt to draw it here, um, z equals one-half. So that's that's where this is. And that's because that green hemisphere is centered at the point zero, zero, one-half. Okay, so that's pretty convenient. So what I said I was going to do today was use triple integrals to find the volume of this object. So it turns out that if you take the triple integral of 1 dv over some object, then you get the volume of the object E. And so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm going to do it in cylindrical coordinates first, and then maybe we'll say to ourselves another coordinate system might work better. And then we'll try it in spherical coordinates in a second video and we'll see what we like more. Okay, so to cylindrical coordinates we go. Actually, let's go back to this picture for a minute. We can tell um, that this object casts a shadow like this. Let's just move this over like a circle. And that circle now has a radius equal to one-half. And the reason we know that is because this line is going up on a perfect diagonal with slope equal to one. Um, and this is at a height of one-half, 
so I must have gone over one half as well. If there's any doubt in your mind that this thing's going up at a 45 degree angle, remember the equation of that cone is z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. So if we just uh, think for a minute, you know, y equals zero, for example, then you get z equals the square root of x squared, which is the absolute value of x, which we know makes a perfect v and has slopes of uh, 1 and then on the other side, negative 1. Okay, so that's that. Um, <clears throat> so that means we can say that r is never greater than 1 half, but it's always greater than 0. We want to go around the entire circle so we can say that theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And then <clears throat> the z values, well, we know that z is bounded from below by the cone. And from above by this green sphere that we have. And we know its equation. The equation of that green sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z minus 1 half squared equals 1 fourth. Well, if we take the time to solve that for z, get z alone, then you end up getting the following. You end up getting um, z minus a half squared equals 1 fourth minus x squared minus y squared. Then even better, I take the square root and I add 1 half, and you find out that z is bounded from above by the square root of 1 fourth minus x squared minus y squared, and then a plus 1 half outside the square root. So those are your boundaries for your, or your limits of integration. Uh, they're not looking so great. So let's go right out this triple integral. So here we go, triple integral. We'll need to decide an order. Um, so let's say, don't forget, you have to multiply by r as your correction factor every time you switch to polar coordinates or cylindrical coordinates. I'm going to do dz first, and then I'll do d theta, and then dr. OK, we're integrating the function 1 because we want the volume. And if you remember, our lower limit here was going to be z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. But in polar coordinates, this is just equal to r. Any doubt about that, just remember x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine of theta. Uh, plug these two things in, plug them in here and here, and do the algebra, you'll see it simplify. Our upper bound, you remember, is going to be the square root of 1 fourth minus x squared minus y squared plus a half. But we can write that. This, this part here is really r squared. So I'm going to write this as the square root of 1 fourth minus r squared plus a half. And then theta is going to easily go from 0 to 2 pi, and r is just going to go from 0 to 1 half. So now we're ready to start computing um, this integral. Let's go to a, a new page and rewrite this one more time here, 0 to 1 half. 0 to 2 pi, r to the square root of 1 fourth minus r squared plus a half, uh, 1 r dz d theta dr. And here we go, inside integral. It's actually really easy. Since z is the variable, r doesn't vary at all. We just get rz evaluated from r to this expression, but that's just going to give you um, r times the square root of 1 fourth minus r squared plus a half, and then minus, looks like we get uh, r times r, r squared. Okay, good times. Uh, next, let's do the integral from 0 to 2 pi and see what happens there, d theta. But again, this integral is also easy. 
for the same reason I mentioned before, because if you look at everything here, there's no thetas in it. So the antiderivative is just this whole expression, minus r squared plus a half, minus r squared, and that whole thing is getting multiplied by theta, because it's really just a number. And we're evaluating from 0 to 2 pi. So I'll speed up things a little bit. This 2 pi will just pop in here, and that'll be 2 pi times this whole expression. When I plug in 0, it'll just go away, so there'll be nothing to subtract. So now I'm just left with the last integral to do. So I'll put the 2 pi out in front, and it's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 half of this whole expression, uh, r times the square root of 1 fourth minus r squared plus 1 half minus r squared dr. And if we're just careful and go through the steps slowly and carefully, we should be OK. Uh, let's do some distributive property here. So we'll have 2 pi integral 0 to 1 half. We'll have an r square root of 1 fourth minus r squared dr. And I'm just going to I'm going to take these two terms and put them together in a separate set of integrals. So it's going to be plus, it's also 2 pi here, integral 0 to 1 half. And you're going to have a 1 half r, just in case you're getting confused. That 1 half r is coming from this 1 half times that r. And then you're going to have um, minus r squared dr. OK, great. Let's do this one first. The math looks a little bit easier here. Antiderivative, if we're careful, of 1 half r would be 1 fourth r squared. Just check the derivative there. The 2 comes down in front. 2 times a fourth is 1 half r. And then this would be minus 1 third r cubed. And we're going to evaluate this from 0 to 1 half. So if we plug 1 half in here, we get 1 fourth times 1 half squared minus 1 third times 1 half to the third. Moving right along, we get 1 fourth times 1 fourth. And then over here, we're going to have 1 third times 1 eighth. So we end up with 1 sixteenth minus 1 24th. Uh, so that's really going to, the common denominator is 48. You have 3 48ths minus 2 48ths, and you'll just get 1 48th. I'll just keep that in mind. Make sure we don't lose track of it. We're going to need that. Oh, and don't forget, it also gets multiplied by 2 pi. So, But we'll do that all at the end. OK. This one. I don't know if you noticed, but this R showing up was really a gift because it's really just like the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside here would be negative 2r. There's not a negative 2 out here, but that's OK. We can correct that by doing a u substitution. So let's just rewrite this one more time. Let's make this the integral from 0 to 1 half. And let's make this r times open parenthesis 1 fourth minus r squared to the 1 half dr. OK. So let's do our u substitution. Let's let u equal 1 fourth minus r squared. Then we know that du dr equals negative 2r, or dr equals du over negative 2. So we will take this and plug it in there. We'll take this and plug it in there. And let's see what happens. So let's keep moving down here. Let's give ourselves a little more space. So we'll get the, and while we're at it, actually, let's be careful. With, let's take our bounds. Sorry about that. Let's take our bounds and plug them in to our expression here and rewrite our limits of integration. So we plug 1 half in, for example, you'll have 1 fourth minus 1 half squared, which is 0. If you plug in 0 here, you'll get 1 fourth. So our integral becomes integral 1 fourth to 0. And then we're plugging u in. We're going to have an r times u to the 1 half. r 
times u to the one half. And then instead of writing dr, we're going to write du over, oops, I realized I forgot to write that. That's a negative 2r there. It's from over here. And it's going to be du over negative 2r. Well, that turns out to be really nice because then the r's cancel. Um, so I'll put this negative a half out in front. And doing the integral from 1 fourth to 0 of u to the 1 fourth du. Depends on how comfortable you are with properties of integrals if you want. If you change the order in integration, then you negate the integral. So you can go from 0 to 1 fourth here if you want u to the 1 half. I wrote 1 fourth here. I meant 1 half. 1 half du. Okay. Moving right along. Let's take our antiderivative and see what happens here. So if we take the antiderivative here, we will get, it's going to have to be u to the 3 halves. We'll divide by a new exponent, so really multiply by 2 thirds, and then times the 1 half, and evaluate from 0 to 1 fourth. Okay, so these cancel. Uh, we'll get 1 third of 1 fourth to the 3 halves power minus 1 third of 0 to the 3 halves power. So that goes away. And don't forget your exponents. This is like power over root. So the square root of 1 fourth is 1 half, cubed is 1 eighth. So I get 1 third times 1 eighth or 1 24th. Okay, now don't forget, over here when we're all said and done, we ended up with a, with a, oops, sorry about that, we ended up with a 1 48th. So that needs to be added on. So let's go do that. We have 1 24th plus 1 48th. And this thing's going to have to get multiplied by 2 pi. So I guess we can distribute that if we want. We get 2 pi over 24, or pi over 12, plus 2 pi over 48, which is pi over 24. That's really 2 pi over 24, plus pi over 24 or 3 pi over 24, or pi over 8. Okay, a lot of work for the volume of an ice cream cone. Honestly, I just prefer to eat it. Thanks for watching, and uh, look for another video where we do this in a different coordinate system where things will be a little bit easier.